All right, everyone, welcome back to Wrestling Backlash, where we give you the latest news on the WWE live matches and the rumors circling around the wrestling world. Tonight, we celebrate round two of the King of the Ring tournament, and guess who we finally see come back after storming off last week? Yup, Drew McIntyre is back, and his opening promo tonight was just okay. He's still obsessed with CM Punk, which I don't understand. Why is Drew McIntyre so obsessed with CM Punk? He's injured and not cleared to wrestle. He's not the world champ. It seems like he has a man crush on CM Punk or something. But then he got smart and reset his focus on who he should be worried about, the so-called paper champion, Damian Priest. The world champ had some choice words for Drew McIntyre and told him he has some serious issues and was pretty much delusional. This booking between these two superstars is gonna happen, pretty much as soon as Drew gets cleared to get back to the active roster. But Drew needs to chill with CM Punk and focus on the prize and the world title. Any more distractions, and he doesn't stand a chance against Damian Priest and the Judgment Day. The first match of the night is a Queen of the Ring match with Io Sky and Shane A. Ah Baszler. I'll give you a couple of seconds to figure out who wins this match. Yup, it's Io Sky. I don't know why the WWE doesn't push Shane A. Ah Baszler, but she gets no love from the company. No real storylines, no major pushes, nothing. Nope, just low budget filler matches after low budget filler match that are not really relevant towards any title contention or PLE matchups. I just don't understand. Is it because she's not as quote unquote pretty as the other women wrestlers? Is it because her promos are mediocre? What do you think? Am I wrong to think Shayna Baszler needs to get a push? Let me know in the comments section below. Anyways, EO Sky advances to the next round of the tournament with a moonsault from the top rope and pins Shayna Baszler. EO Sky looks to be one of the favorites to get to the finals. The next matchup is on the men's side of the King of the Ring tournament. Kofi Kingston versus the Ring General, Gunther. Before they could even ring the bell, Kofi assaulted Gunther outside of the ring. Kofi, targeting Gunther's knee. Just like Gunther did to Xavier Woods last week, it was working for a little bit, but then the bell rung and Gunther went to work on Kofi. Really good match between these two veterans. Two different styles of wrestling, but the match worked out well, and they both sold the story well throughout the match. The Greenville, South Carolina crowd was chanting, this is awesome throughout the match, and indeed, this match was awesome. Kofi hits the trouble in paradise outside of the ring, but it wasn't enough to keep Gunther out of the ring for a countout, and Gunther gets Kofi to tap out after a huge powerbomb followed by a Boston Crab. Gunther advances to the semifinals to face the winner of the Jey Uso vs. Dragunov matchup happening later on tonight. The next match of the night was a pretty beefy one. Big Bronson Reed took on Tazawa from the Alpha Academy, with Chad Gable chirping on the side of the ring, pretty much heckling his own member of the Alpha Academy. Needless to say, it was light work for Reed and the match lasted only seconds. And Chad Gable has to talk down to Tazawa in the center of the ring after the match. I don't know how much the Alpha Academy can take of Chad Gable's belittling behavior. Otis is gonna have to pancake him pretty soon. Zoe Stark and Lyra Valkyria are up next, up in the women's quarterfinals. The newest member of the Raw roster and former NXT champion Valkyria proved the main stage was not too big for her. She looked good performing with Zoe Stark and hit her finishing move the Nightwing to take out Stark and advance to the semifinals to face off against Io Sky. I think it's safe to say that Zoe Stark is another one that's lost all of her steam after her push with Trish Stratus last year. She's been stuck in limbo for a while. What do you think is in store for Stark next? Let us know in the comments below. Sami Zayn takes on Otis in the next match of the night. And once again, Chad Gable is ringside looking like he ate a bad Brussels sprout. Otis was about to hit the sexiest worm in the WWE, but the dumb fun police Chad Gable interfered with his own guy to forbid him to do the worm elbow drop. Of course, Otis is not going to listen to Gable and tears off his Alpha Academy shirt and proceeds to the worm, which was awesome and the best part of this match. Chad Gable gets on the apron to berate Otis and Sami Zayn takes advantage of the distraction and kicks Otis square in the face in the corner of the ring and pins him to win the match. Now, this is the third match that is lost by the Alpha Academy and the leader and coach of this team was the cause of all of their losses. Bad leadership by Gable, which got even worse as he got back into the ring after the match to berate Otis some more. Gable went too far and shoved Otis in the face to show his disgust. Now, I know we all love Otis, so how many of you would have thought Otis would just allow this type of disrespect sitting down? I know I was ready to see Otis man up and show Gable what's up. And guess what happened? Sammy comes back to the ring to throw Chad Gable through the corner of the ring. Otis walks back up the ramp and Gable slaps the taste out of his mouth as they proceed back to the locker room. 
Come on now, Otis. You are better than this. Please, do us all a favor and turn on Chad Gable soon. I can't wait to see this mutiny brewing inside of Alpha Academy. The third hour of Raw is underway, and Damage Control's bland and boring member Dakota Kai is next up to face the man, Becky Lynch. The only reason Dakota is relevant on Raw is because of Damage Control and the talents of Kairi Sane and Io Sky. Otherwise, she would be the most irrelevant member on the Raw roster. She doesn't sell very well throughout the match with Becky Lynch. She's just very blah in the ring, if you ask me. Of course, she needed Damage Control to interfere and have her disqualified. Lyra comes down the ramp to save Becky Lynch, but Liv Morgan sneaks a couple of licks in herself and throws Lynch to the post. Love the Liv heel move. Should be a fun storyline to watch develop. The next to last match of the night is the Tag Team Fatal 4-Way match to determine the number one contenders for the World Tag Team Championship. The Judgment Day, New Catch Republic, the Creed Brothers, and the Final Testament put on one hell of a match tonight. There were too many athletic and awesome highlights to mention in this video. This was truly one banger of the match, and I honestly think the tag team division is pretty damn strong on the Raw brand. I wouldn't be mad if any of these four tag teams won, but Julius Creed's double suplex on the Judgment Day was pretty awesome. Bodies were flying everywhere during this match. Double power bombs by the Authors of Pain, double moon salts by the New Catch Republic, Brutus's ball drop from the top rope. You name it, it happened in this match. Judgment Day wins the match with Carlito's help, and they are back again as the number one contenders for the World Tag Titles and will face the Awesome Truth for the championship. The main event and last match of the night is a great one. Main event Jey Uso against the Dragon Ilya Dragunov. Greenville brought the energy, and they had the place rocking when Uso came out and down the ramp. I know it's early in Dragunov's career in the WWE, but his match with Jey Uso has me thinking he has what it takes to be a main event superstar in the WWE. Jey Uso delivers the Uso splash from the top rope to advance to the semifinals to face Gunther. But Dragunov held his own in the ring, and I can't wait to see how he performs on Raw in the future. Jey Uso is the top man, and is surely the favorite to be winner of the King of the Ring, but he has a mountain of a man named Gunther in his path. We will see who will reach the finals next week between these two powerhouses. We will see you later this week for our SmackDown recap and some wrestling rumors you won't believe. Until next time.